Oh, Claire and I are going to like be putting our graves in lilac. It's funny. We've had a fantastic day yesterday and um, Claire's even got nail polish. She was on a bus with me yesterday as we were taking journalists and influencers and Trini drivers through our new See the Light launch. Look, we are literally a meringue of purple, <laughs> aren't we? Um, and so we thought we'd get on today and just answer all your questions because there's a ton of questions about it and go into the details of why we formulated it and what was behind the idea for the formulation and what was behind the whole idea of getting people to be encouraged to think about an SPF 50 every single day. And we're also going to talk about Australia and America who do not yet have this product because we're waiting for things to catch up a bit. So we'll go into that detail as well. So good morning, everyone. Hope you're well. I also just want to get this working, Nisha, so that I have the right, you so know. We've got to click on the comments. We've got to click yeah. on, I know, but it, before that's for writing oh. a comment, you see, it does sort of happen when everyone's joined, but it just, it, it takes a while. We'll see how we go. Yeah. But otherwise you can call out the comments as soon as they come in, because this is a real Q and A. So let's take you through um, why we did an SPF 50. And I think that I, okay, I want to ask you, Claire, how, how late in the day did you start to wear a 50? Well, I've been, um, I was starting with a 30. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say 50 in maybe the last six, seven years. Yeah. And at 30, I started right at the beginning yeah. because I worked in the industry. Uh, so and, you, and you burn in the sun. So you're, you're I burn in the sun, you. but also I learned early on is that. SPF was going to be the biggest thing that's going to help my, yeah. my skin from aging. So in my early 20s, I was on the SPF train. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of you are on the SPF train because I think you follow this Wednesday skincare Q&A because we talk about skin and looking after skin. And when we were thinking about how we're going to look after skin even more, I think the most important thing that anyone can have in a routine, even if you are appalling at washing your face, is to wear an SPF because 90% of the sort of damage of your damage you see of premature aging comes from exposure to light. And I think we'll caveat that because a lot of people think exposure to sun on a holiday, mm -hmm. but we want to go into the details of why it's just exposure to light and what that means. Yeah, and I think it's important that, you know, you're getting UV damage all throughout the year. So UVA mm -hmm. is the, um, the rays that cause the aging. Yeah? yeah, they go deeper into the skin. So they can damage your collagen and they are present all year round. Mm. So UVB is obviously higher in the summer and lower in the winter. Yeah, yeah? and that's obviously that's from the, the burning, burning right. side. Yeah. But the UVA is present all year round. Mm. Yeah, and that's the thing around people just thinking to protect at summertime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, I, and I think that there's, you know, I'm gonna just talk about the Irish because you're Irish, Claire, yeah. and I know so many fantastic Irish ladies, and, and I know so many fantastic Dutch ladies, and people who, because their general weather is you know, not predictable, they rush to get some sun, and, mm -hmm. and that immediate feeling, and I appreciate that, like even on the bus yesterday, as we went around London on our Trini London bus, there were women who were saying, but I love the sun, yeah. and I love to go in the sun, and it's, about a real reset so it's you know you can look in the mirror and think oh my god you know the skin isn't feeling what it used to feel and then you can go on a holiday which might be one or two weeks for that moment of feeling the sun get back and then your skin will have this readjustment readjustment i remember always to me it used to be that it felt unbelievably dry pigmentation would come out so it's like for that little two-week moment what are you what are you gaining mm -hmm. and are there alternatives can you consider fake tan or bronzer or blusher so that's just one thing to think about but the other is also the details of how your skin is protected by spfs and what's the difference for example between a 30 and a 50 because many of you use our bff all right and you're like this we love and this is a fantastic protector against burning yeah 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 but if you want to invest in actually preventive skin aging then you're upgrading to that that's the fundamental yeah difference. this has obviously got uva protection yeah. it is a broad spectrum sunscreen yeah. but it's on a lower level mm. so this we've maxed out in terms of the uvb we yeah. have made it spf 50 plus which is the highest we can claim mm -hmm. it's actually a 60 it's actually 68 is it really okay. um, spf 68 yeah. something um, might be oh no that's so high yeah but the way, yeah yeah but it's still giving you that 97 percent protection it's very hard to get 100 percent protection yeah. um and then it's also high uva so it's mm. got 
the maximum of it's PA4 plus, which is a, a way to measure it in um, the Far East. And they are. What does that mean? Why do they do that? Because in Europe and America and Australia, we just think of SPF factors. We don't think of this plus plus and this four plus. I think in Asia particularly, they are very, very sun aware. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for them, from a traditional perspective, they like to have a paler skin. Mm -hmm. And obviously they're in very hot climates yeah? yeah so they're always protecting against the sun yeah so they have developed more advancement in some of the things in the technology so you know with korean and japanese like japan is one of the biggest skincare markets in the world mm. and they know how to look after the skin exactly. now they have a 15 step routine to yeah, do that they do, but, they do, we don't but want they that. do have great insight yeah. and they have a really smart way of measuring the uva and this is why we went to korea because when we were developing we did start in the uk and we were looking and then we thought actually we had heard about these new filters in Korea and we thought, let's go to Korea. So we worked with the lab in Korea mm -hmm. to create it. By the way, it's 50 ml, not 30. There's our 30 and there's 50. Yeah. All right, so it is much, much bigger. bigger. Um, and we wanted to use these filters because they did certain things that other SPFs don't do. So I don't know how often that you put on an SPF. I wish I had a bad one here to show the difference, actually. But you put it on, it would take forever to rub in. Um, and you, if you went under a UV light, you have all these things, sometimes they're on TikTok, which shows the uneven dispersal of a cream because to get the evenness of the SPF in the formulation is tricky, but the Koreans have done a new technology, a new machinery, which actually finally disperses the SPF. So you're gonna get this fantastic, even SPF, very fine. It feels so much lighter yeah. than other traditional SPFs. Yeah, and you can only manufacture in Korea with this technology to get at that line. If I took the same formula and try to make it in Europe, it would actually not come out as light. So no. it's actually the technology. So with never mind product. we have next generation UV filters mm -hmm. in there um, that are much more photostable. They give you that and um, they're less sensitive to the skin so it doesn't sting your eyes. Yeah. And that was actually super important, um, I yeah. think, because I've tried so many SPFs and I'm yeah. crying for like an hour. Yeah. So it doesn't sting your eyes. We got that really fine, even coverage of protection and we can make it lightweight. Yeah. Now, questions are in the room. Have we got questions coming up? Yeah, loads. We have some questions as well from yesterday. Yep. Um, this was one that came up quite a lot. It said, um, how do I now use my Bounce Back or Energize Me if I want to use the new moisture, SPF moisturizer during the day? Well, I would say that a lot of people um, have to work out what their skin is like and everyone's skin is different. So for me, I did a routine this morning on my stories and I went from our vitamin C boost up to see the light and that was all I needed for my skin today. Now, if it was in winter, I would definitely put Bounce Back on before because my skin is drier in the winter. And at the moment, I'm using Bounce Back after my retinoid at night. So it's kind of moved position because this is a moisturizing SPF. Claire, what do you do? So I have kind of normal, slightly combination, but very not very oily skin, yeah. but I'm super dehydrated no matter what I do. And I use Bounce Back underneath it every morning, um, even in the summer. You yeah, that's, some of that yeah, it's coffee. Coffee. Coffee getting coffee. <laughs> coffee. It's coffee time. I hope you've yes. got yours too. Um, so it really just depends. Yeah. It's about listening to your skin. We always say um, listen to your skin and feel what it feels like. If you haven't been drinking a lot of water, then you need more, you know, liquid high um, uh, liquid hydration, like plump up in a way. And if you're just actually dry and and you have a drier skin and you have less oils in your skin than you would do with a little moisturizer before. Yeah, yeah. I think in the summertime, you probably get away with it. Yeah. Um, I just like that, um, the hydration I get from. Yeah. Energizing. Well, 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 no, I actually use, use Bounce, bounce Back. back yeah. 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 yeah, it's because it, it's not that heavy, Yeah. but it's still really nurturing. Yeah, yeah. and then I use the SPF. Routine. And it depends how much you like to layer. I find that sometimes I'll wake up and I feel very tired. It's not my skin is dry, but then I want to put a few more layers on. You know, yeah, so it's all yeah, about yeah, the layering yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, yes, next question. Uh, next question. How does it sit under my makeup mm. in the morning? Well, I did a routine today where I did see the light, then I put on BFF SPF 30. And by the way, that doesn't mean you're wearing an SPF 80. It just means you're layering them. But I wanted the micro um, encapsulation of the pigment of the BFF to just give me Thing. And then I put a bit of just the touch here and here and here. And it's to me a kind of fabulous primer because I think my mm -hmm. skin looks really fresh. 
Yeah. Um, it doesn't look like I've got a lot of makeup on because I haven't, but just a touch is covering my very dark circles from um, a lot of work yesterday. Yeah. I would say it's a super good primer. Um, We're not getting the comments still. Yeah. Switch. So, so Nisha's is trying to find out for Either us way. how we get the comments. Yeah. I know it's just we just aren't getting the comments. Oh wait, morning girl. So I am getting a comment. All right, we got a comment now. Bit of banana bread here. Sorry, we're eating, but um, rushed here from my broccoli and scrambled eggs breakfast, Claire, which is all right, but it's like a, it's like an obligation. It's not a joy. Oh, yeah. Banana bread is joy. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it really is. So um, next question, darling. What what does it smell like? Do it smells know? like. A lot of people also were talking about this yesterday and I was looking at all the comments on my channel um, afterwards and some people were saying, I wish it didn't have a fragrance. Yeah. Now, I know that people who wish, wish things not to have a fragrance are there and as we get bigger as a brand, it might be that we can afford to do a fragrance and a non-fragrance-free version, but it is tricky managing everything to do that and whenever we have one person talking about not wanting fragrance we'll have 10 people saying they love the fragrance so it's it, we have to kind of go it's with the, the majority balance. and well, the balance I, I think if we felt there was the demand for a non-fragrance yeah. version we i would, think we yeah. would definitely try right. to to do that so we wanted to have i'm so sorry i just need to scroll this a hint of the fragrance that we use a hint of that bounce back it's very soft um we didn't want you to feel sun cream because this is not a sun spf this is a skincare yeah. spf so it's in a family of skincare so when you put it on your skin i mean if i put it on claire's skin for a second mm -hmm. i need got makeup on but the test for me is whether let's say i went to kiss claire good morning i just get that lovely you just get freshness to it but it doesn't last too long not that you're not fresh yeah anyway. thank you you're thank always you. fresh <laughs> but i just i just no but i just like that sort of yeah like I put it on. It's you're right. It doesn't last long because it sort of goes. Yeah, but this complements your whole routine. I yeah, think. And it, yeah. It, it's that sort of. It, I like having a sensorial experience mm -hmm. that is about touch and smell when I use my skincare because it makes me more involved in the routine. And the thing was, you know, most traditionally we ask people, what, "Do you use SPF 50?" Mm -hmm. And it's like either it's the chore in your routine, mm -hmm. yeah, yep. and they don't do it, and they say, "Oh, I only do it in the summertime." Yep. And the whole point was for us, the concept was get people wearing SPF all year round. So you've got to make it joyful. Yeah. And the fragrance is part of that joy yeah. experience as well as the texture. Cause mm -hmm. it was like, if we can create an SPF that doesn't feel like an SPF, that is the winner. Yeah. That, then there is no blocks yeah. to actually protecting your skin all year round. Exactly. And I otherwise saw... people sacrifice and say, and they, oh, yeah. I, I don't want to do it today. And in terms of the fragrance level, um, what's really important is I saw a comment that I think you wrote or somebody from New Product Development wrote yesterday, which was that somebody said, if I have sensitive skin, can I use it? And we said, yes, we had it tested on sensitive yeah. skin, but if you cannot use any fragrance at all, then you wouldn't use this. I yeah. think that's what we said, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and what, we had some other questions like that. Have we got other questions um, coming yeah. up live now, but... We've got lots coming in. Someone's asking if we can explain a little bit more about the filters that are in it. Mm -hmm. No, and also, can I get to New Zealand? I think we might start with New Zealand with 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 just why we're only selling it right now in Europe and the UK. So when we embarked on this journey, and we were going everywhere to think, how do we make this? And then we ended up in Korea. We knew, and we've known for a long time because that's why we don't sell BFF in um, America, is that. America have um, uh, SPFs as a drug and they have a list of filters they use which are so archaic and it's talked about Basically, they're like, they're just... a, they're basically the, the filters are considered drugs because they protect against sun cancer. Yeah. So they are drugs and it takes a long time to get anything approved. And in America, they haven't approved a new drug, which is a UV filter mm -hmm. in like 20 years. Yeah. Insane. So yeah. that's why if you are American, and you try SPFs in America, you just feel they're very heavy. And if you try them in Europe or Australia mm -hmm. or Korea, you just think, my God, this is fantastic. Yeah. And it's just... We I can, can innovate. We can innovate. They, they haven't caught yeah. up. They really haven't caught up. That's America. Australia, it's slightly different. So Australia have different sets of rules. Between a 30, it's cosmetic, the ingredients, and a 50, it's a drug. And as we were developing this, we wanted to include it for Australia. But we have got 
two filters in this which are very new and the process of getting something approved as a drug which in, in Australia 50 is a drug takes time. Now since we've been in the process of development one of them actually has actually been approved already mm -hmm. um, and so we're at this situation where we're thinking do we wait and the other one be approved and then you'll just get it as soon as it's approved because they're fantastic filters or do we create something that you could um, use now and we sort of feel we're still in Lumberland. We're looking at formulations that are based on this, but without that one filter, but then it's such a good filter, we want to wait for it to be approved in Australia. Yeah. So it's a real tricky one, but that's just to be candid where we're at. Now, in the meantime, I just want to make a commitment to you that every time I am speaking in um, to Australians or to anyone, I would say, use an SPF 50 if yeah. you live in England and whatever, and otherwise use Ultraviolet. And Ultraviolet's a lovely brand, although even Caroline Hirons yesterday said, ours felt, what she said? Lighter. Ours yeah. felt lighter. Um, but I would say it's an amazing brand, and I'll recommend to you other brands in your country that I think are good. Mm -hmm. All right, that's my commitment to you, because I think in this conversation, it's a generic conversation about the importance of using an SPF 50. We've tried to make it really easy for you to use one that feels fantastic. But in the meantime, there are some ones out there which which ha are some female founded brands that I love, like Ultraviolet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're working on it hard. I think that's mm. the thing is we haven't forgotten. It's not like we've. Um, I think it's just waiting and seeing what the, which option comes out yeah, first. Yeah. Exactly. Whether the option we work on as a backup or the yeah. filters get approved. Yeah. Um, somebody saying wait for the filter approval. I mean, I'd love to yeah. because this is an incredible formulation, mm -hmm. and I just want you to have it. We both. Sorry, Claire. We we both want you to have it. But I know there's lots of Australians on now and it's it's frustrating for us. It's the first time that we've launched something where we haven't managed to launch for everyone. And it was such a, shall we do it or shouldn't we do it? You know, and we just kind of thought it's so fantastic what it is that we want to do it. And we hope that the other countries will catch up. Mm -hmm. um, so that's it. Yes. Other questions, please. Australian recommendations. I say ultraviolet and they have different ones. They have different sets of 50s. They have a lightweight one. They have a, a heavier one. There are three or four and they have one with colour in it. But of all the formulations I've tried in Australia, I do like ultraviolet probably the most. And also Helio Care, which I think sells in Australia as a foam yeah. that I've always loved. Very good if you have acne or oilier skin. I yes. always love uh, La Roche-Posay and yeah. the Ant yeah. Antelios range, mm. I think is great. And they have a little tinted version as well, which yeah. isn't bad. It's, yeah. uh, I find it, the filter are really heavy on that. But, it is heavy, yeah. but I suppose it like, yeah, I find yeah. the fluid yeah. is light enough, like it's okay. Mm. I mean, I would use a body one on holiday. Yeah, really yeah. good, yeah. actually. Really nice. Yeah, and yeah. I always take that on holiday with me. Um, next question. Um, does see the light protect against UVA, UV, UVB and blue light? And what is the difference between UVA and UVB? Mm. Well, Claire went through that earlier. We're going to quickly go through it. Now, so imagine UVA aging. They're the rays that go in, they go deep and they age your skin. UVB, burning. They go less deep and you burn. Yep. So most of the rays are UVA rays that come in. 95% are UVA rays. Yeah. And the 5% are the UVB rays. And but of the 95 That just shows you how powerful the UVB is, even in that 5%. It so does, actually. Because it actually it? it's burning. Yeah. yeah, it's like it can take over and go, whoom! Yeah. So, but also, it makes you think, if 5% burns the surface of your skin, what the fuck is 95% doing? You know what I mean? It's like, mm. it's doing a lot of stuff in damage. And that's why we're just on this mission. The most obvious reason of skin cancer, but equally a vanity matrix of, I want to have good skin as long as I can. The thing is, there's no point having like a great skincare routine if you're then going to undo it all by mm. actually not wearing SPF mm. at the end, yeah? yeah? So like, if you want it's to look true. after your it's skin, yeah. the best gift you can give your skin is an SPF mm. and a high SPF with high UVA, yeah? That's what you want and it's about then. So it's about 30% of your UV damage in the year is coming in your summer holidays, yeah? Then you've got another 20, 30% that's happening over the summer months. Yeah. And then the rest of that is happening the rest of the year. Mm. So the thing is, if you actually wear it all year round, you're gonna catch all of the uh, premature aging that yeah. you get and if you look after your skin when you're young you don't actually have to get wrinkles I know. and you don't have to get pigmentation and yeah. you know if you look at or yeah, I have that bad, um, anyway. friends yeah. of mine who some people God makes them look after their skin so they have really red hair and very pink lighter skin and they just don't I have friends yeah. of Lila's who literally 
Do not go in the sun at all. Wear a hat. Unbelievable skin. I know when they are 50, they'll look 30 and they'll have incredible skin and on their body too, beautiful skin, beautiful skin. So it does make you think of what you want to do and what you said, Claire, the work you put in to get a great skin on your face as well as um, mm -hmm. then killing it with sun. Yeah. Yeah, so um, sunscreen for those in the US, I would say La Roche-Posay is sold in America. I know the formulas are tweaked for America because of this very old fashioned filter system that is there. So that's one that I would recommend, yeah. Can we use see the light on the beach or on holiday or is it more for the day to day about and aware? This is the difference between, you have sun care SPFs and you have skin care SPFs and we wanted to take the SPF 50 from sun care into skin care. So you see it as your everyday skin care and your skincare routine. Now, if you're gonna be on holiday, of course you can use this, but like any SPF, you need to reapply it every couple of hours. So generally on holiday, I think people wear less foundation in the day or they don't. So very easy, every two hours you apply. If you are going water sports, it is not waterproof. It's not sandproof. So it doesn't have those extra filters that heavier sunscreen the film formers, uh, film yeah. formers yeah. have in, in sort of sun care SPF. That's the difference. But I have done this on holiday, but I just, if I'm going on a boat or something, or I'm, you know, know there'll be water around me, I will also put a waterproof one. Well, on. uh, when I was in Bali in yeah. March, yeah. I re I used it, reapplied yeah. it every two hours, mm -hmm. and yeah, it was great. It but was. Um, yeah, did you I, get colour through it, Claire? Oh, I had a great tan. You did. You I had actually the best tan I think I've ever had, which was just this really nice glow. So is that Very damage happened even to your skin by it tanning? Any That's time, what I want to yeah, but any time yeah. you tan, you damage. Yeah. That's just yeah. the reality. Tan is a sign of damage. The Irish one is still in her. Yeah. It is. That sort of, I got a good tan, Trini. No, but I was wearing SPF 50, but I had a very slow tan. So the thing so is, you didn't obviously, have the aggressive. No, off, yeah. no, but I, I, you have a glow. So yeah. what I had was a glow when I came yeah. back. I didn't yeah. actually, it wasn't like, I can't. You want a piece of rice chicken? No, because I can't get that tan yeah. I burn. Yeah? yeah. So I have to protect it. But yeah. it was very nice. But I would say this is not about beach care. This is about your everyday yeah. um, outside of your yeah. summer holiday. Yeah, and, I agree. Yeah. So it's that shift of the mindset. Yeah. Um, and that is challenging because it, it is a big shift and we would love to be on journey to help people. So vitamin D, this is a really good one. The problem is I don't like white skin. I'm Italian and I need a tan. So I want to, I want to unpack all of that, Greta. So vitamin D, you can get, yeah. you said to me yesterday, through this. How yeah. come? Um, because it's not blocking the production of vitamin D right. in the skin. Okay. Yeah. Because your skin is the your skin so synthesizes vitamin D. Why do some people think D. wearing an SPF? Uh, because it. there's a lot of like science that comes out, and you have one paper that will say one thing, and then mm. that gets blown up. Mm. So there's a lot of kind of people understanding a topic, and as we go along. But now we know that um, vitamin D is not blocked by the, the, new, the yeah. yeah, especially the next generation. It's also about mineral and chemical. Yes. Because this whole thing that mineral UV filters just reflect the light and mm -hmm. a chemical absorbs it. We actually know now they work exactly the same. So why would people choose mineral over chemical? Well, that is the key thing. Yeah. So mineral generally has been more associated with more sensitive, so it's less sensitizing. The molecules are really big, so they sit on the surface of the skin. Yeah. So they don't penetrate and therefore cause irritation. Mm -hmm. And the old fashioned chemical filters might have penetrated a little bit further, so they were smaller particles and then yeah. they would irritate. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, um, the new chemical so our next generation are actually slightly bigger molecules mm -hmm. even though it's a finer dispersion mm -hmm. and a lighter texture they sit on the surface of the skin and they don't actually irritate that's why yeah. they don't sting the eyes yeah. but both mineral and chemical both absorb a bit and some chemical can reflect light some absorb so yeah. this is where things where a myth is I now know. evolved I know. Yeah, know, and people and, yeah. understand it one way when it's actually yeah. not necessarily. We the had case. people yesterday saying on TikTok they were saying don't wear SPF because it's yeah. um, toxic, which is I mean stuff like this should just be shut down because it's so bad to think like hey, the misinformation that yeah, can spiral. It's, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, so that's the vitamin D one. Also, I say Greta, you don't like white skin. You're Italian and you need a tan. I mean, I'm just gonna say that. You know, you want the tan, you're Italian, I get that. It's such a, it's such a um, Italian thing. 
So I, I can't tell you don't go in the sun, but I can just say that consider maybe just gently starting on your face with a little bronzing. I'm gonna use a bit of Swala and Gaia just to get that sense. Cause there is on a certain Italian skin, um, uh, if you are an Italian with an olive skin, there is that sense you feel you look gray in the winter. And I do appreciate that. So now I'm just putting on now some Swala Golden Glow over my makeup with some uh, Gaia. I'm just thinking which one I use Gaia. It's named after a lovely Italian lady who used to work here. And then I'll put a bit on my nose. So I could have been in the sun now, couldn't I? Yeah, and that's what I do for my time yeah, is just put uh, a little bit of bronzer on. There, so it's taken yeah. all that sense of... Um, just gives you that healthy glow. Just gives you that healthy glow and, and then it comes off at night. So yeah. it means that when you go to sleep, you don't look in the mirror and look tanned, but it does mean you've so protected your skin. And as you go down the path of life, you feel you've just, you know, the, the actual glow from your skin not being dried out like a prune by being in the sun, you would thank us for. I yeah. just... So, um, just on the topic of tanning, there is a lot of people talking about is it too late at a certain point if you've done damage to your skin to introduce an SPF to your routine? Well, let's talk about reversal of sun damage generally, because yeah. I think that's a good conversation. You might be in your 40s or 50s or 60s and you might think to yourself, I've got pigmentation already, I've got uh, effects of the sun damage. So. First of all, there's things you can do to gently help that. So you can use a vitamin C that will actually, if you use it at night, help to uh, break down your pigmentation. You can use a retinoid, which helps to give new skin and you can be exfoliating. So all those three things can help to an extent to reverse the signs of sun damage. The other thing as well, and this is one of my favorite stats that you got out of the clinical trials, was when women were using it, because you just think it's a protective measure, but it actually is a restorative measure because after a month of use, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Uh, like 87% said they felt their, their skin tone was more even. Their skin tone yeah. was more even. So those people who'd had damage and unevenness caused by the sun. And you're gonna give the medical reason why that's true. So the thing is, like it takes a lot of energy for your skin to actually protect itself against the sun. Mm -hmm. So if you're using a really high SPF, and high UVA, mm -hmm. you actually are saving all that energy. So your skin is not having to work as hard because the product is doing it for you. Yep. So the skin can actually turn and start repairing in the daytime. So the thing is, most time we know that in the day, it's battle, 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 battle. Yep. against all the elements yep. in the day and then repair yourself at night. But actually, if you actually shield and have the adequate protection in the day, that energy starts to actually help to go into the whole repair mechanisms of the skin. So it can be so powerful without having any additional ingredients yeah. in there. Yeah. It allows the skin to naturally repair mm. itself. And skin can repair itself. It's like when you have a cut, I mean, as you get older, it takes longer, but you know, I had a huge gaping cut all the way down my arm from my car crash. And now I just have this, you know, that's no cream I put on. I mean, that is my skin naturally repairing itself. So if it wants to do that and it's been protected from the sun and it had a bandage over it so it had time to do that, mm -hmm. know what your skin can do if it's not having to do other things. So the dream team. Yeah, dream team. Dream team. Dream team, yeah. vitamin C and an SPF. I know, yeah, in the like morning. So your vitamin C is adding the high boost of antioxidants, mm. yeah? So if any damage gets past the SPF, yeah. the vitamin C is there, and yeah. then it's really been able to there repair. So um, a vitamin C in the morning, followed by a really high SPF is like the dream team. Mm. That is what is gonna make the most difference to your yeah. skin. I do, I mean, I love them together, I have to say, and they work really well they together. They work really they well work together. So well together. Yeah. But it can be anybody's vitamin C, it yeah. doesn't have it doesn't to be have just to be ours. It could just but be a concept of a vitamin one, C, yeah. get into that routine, find one that suits your skin. Yeah. Yeah. Because people like either a sort of creamier one or an oilier one or a sort of serum like one. Ours is more a serum like one. And vitamin C um, is also quite like, it can be a little bit irritating for people. So mm -hmm. you need to find one that actually works with your skin as yeah, well. Yeah. 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 But just looking at that, I just feel the nurturing mm -hmm. of my hand there. Yeah. Yeah, wow, look yeah. at the glow. I know, it's just weird. Really, it's a good combination, Claire. Okay, final three questions, Nisha. We've got one here that says, um, can we talk about the ingredients in Cedar Light other than SPF? 
the ingredients in Seed the Light, so well. there are two, yeah. um, and they do different things. So when we were doing this formulation, we wanted to moisturize and hydrate, which we used. Yeah, the raspberry leaf. So yeah. for me, it's all about the barrier, yeah? So sun makes the barrier lose up to 50% more water loss, mm -hmm. yeah? So that's any um, UV exposure. You know when you go in the sun and you, um, if you get burnt and then your skin starts to peel, yeah. it gets super, super dry. Yeah. That is a UV damaging the barrier. Mm -hmm. So what you do to protect it. So yeah. we have raspberry seed um, extract and that has, sorry, raspberry leaf extract. That has a lot of um, uh, essential fatty acids yeah. that are really helping to uh, protect the barrier. And then we also have a white tea mm -hmm. um, complex and this ingredient is really helping with this anti-pollution. Yeah? yeah. And it's also like about weather, wind, everything that's happening things, yeah. all mm. the, the, the rest of the time. Yeah. 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 Right. Good. And it's 24 hour moisturization. Yes, that I love. And we just got that back in our um, trial very recently, literally a couple of days before we launched. So I'm glad we got it back then. Will Trinilon be enough to get rid of my pigmentation 40 year old skin or do I need a clinical treatment first? Emily, it depends what your pigmentation is like, because if you're 40 um, and you, you know, you've got this probably from sun damage in your youth and you might be having hormonal fluctuations right now, which are making it come out. And if you have dotted pigmentation, um, which is not what we would call melasma, which is more clusters, then I think a vitamin C can break it down. But if you have clusters which have become quite big, there are in clinic treatments like Cosmolan, Cosmoda, Cos Cosmolan, yeah. Cosmolan yeah. which you do in clinic and then they give you a cream afterwards, kind of nearly prescription. And then you could do that as a treatment for a month and then you could go onto the vitamin C to protect you from future damage in conjunction with your SPF 50. That's what I'd suggest. But I would say the biggest thing is to use your SPF to protect your um, yeah. pigmentation from getting any worse. Yeah. And then you have to tr think about in winter time treating it. Yeah, exactly. Trudy, your face, yes, but don't forget your forearms. I'm seeing it yeah. now. Yeah, I know. And, you know, just like here, everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do use a few sort of bits there, but I think we're thinking, would we make one for the body at some stage? That yeah. is... That is um, Tan skin ages people. It does, darling. I know, and it does. That's that's the bottom line. Um, Claire, you have very healthy glow, says Tracy. Yeah, thank you. And yeah. a little bit of it is a bit of uh, Suella. Is the rest of it sex? <laughs> <laughs> Just like you know, it's that kind of healthy glow. Um, does it protect against blue light damage? Uh, no, it does not. It doesn't. No. All right, fine. So blue light damage. But Let's it talk has a lot it. of great antioxidants in there that can protect. But no, I didn't test. But we have uh, something else for blue light damage. Um, de-stress is a blue light damage. In yeah, it. It, we it do. Yeah, blue light exactly. Damage. So if you but... wear de-stress over, you are going to get some of that. I'm eating banana bread. You do get some of that blue light yeah. protection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, where do we add bounce back now in the morning routine before you put on the SPF? And if you, if you feel, need it, if you need it, otherwise it's great for evening. Yep. The best routine, Ross, depends on your skin type. The best thing to do is if you've already bought your Trini London skincare routine, um, then just slot it in at the end of that skincare routine. And if you find that you've got enough hydration, then you can take out your moisturizer because it is a moisturizing SPF, but it's not a moisturizing SPF for very dry skin. Um, it's for people who don't want to feel overly mm -hmm. moisturized and it also depends on how many steps you've done before if yeah. you've done multiple serums you probably don't need a moisturizer exactly you know so if you did the r boost up is quite nourishing yeah so you could just spf on top mm. um in terms of routine we had a question about layering and whether you would still get the actives from bff de-stress into your skin if you've used Cibolite? You do, because BFFD stress has a formulation which works on cortisol, and cortisol um, you release as your stress-releasing, uh, from st it's a stress-releasing hormone, and it comes out and it sits right on your epidermis, literally it's there, okay? So de-stress works with a neofrolene, 10% of yeah. the neofrolene, on sort of, I could only just say gobbling up that um, cortisol uh, production, because then there's less of it, which is, aggravating your skin, it dehydrates your skin and it ages your skin. And actually, that's why we love the combination of the cortisol production and the neofrolene because they both work right on the extremity of your yeah, skin. Yeah, and I think that's a great combo is yeah. the SPF 50 um, and then... Um, and then de-stress. De-stress. Really, I mean, that's, that's like protection of yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, is the cover that BFF Factor 30 gives as good as Into the Light? 
it's um, a beer, um, the coverage on BFF, Skin Perfecta, is microencapsulation. So for those of you who are watching and haven't used it before, when you put it on, it's white and it will break the pigment. There's microencapsulation, it becomes the color of your skin, all right? And that is an SPF 30 with pigment. Whereas See the Light is an SPF 50 without pigment. So when you put that on, no pigment's going to be released. It's a bigger tube, it's a 50 ml, different experience, higher protection, um, and more protection basically for the skin. Yeah. yeah. The good thing is you can use them together if you like yeah. the um, end finish yeah. of BFF. Yeah. I, I, I love yeah. that combination. I've been doing that a lot and I, it's my favorite combination. Yeah. You have the bronze crusher, isn't it? Love Gaia yeah. bronze. It's a yeah. fantastic bronze. Are there any actions to see the light? I think that Claire just yeah. went over those. I need to change my mindset then. It is a mindset thing. Yeah, it really is a mindset thing. And it's, 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 it's like a tricky winter time one. Yeah. thinking, I don't need an SPF 50. Yeah. So if we can, this is the whole point, is make it so light that it's a joy. And it's I just know, something I you know. do, the end of your routine, mm. and you will, like, and it's never too late. And that yeah. was the one thing. It doesn't matter what age you are. Mm. You start now, you actually are protecting more damage, yeah. but also you're starting to repair the damage you yeah. have. So, yeah. you know, you're not going to go back to 20-year-old skin, no, but we don't want to do that either. That. No. Like, the reality it is you weird. can just make your skin, yeah. Yeah. It would, I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, Australians, again, uh, like every Australian here, I'm desperate to know yeah. if you have a timeline for Australian disease release we will we are a very transparent brand we will keep you updated as soon as we have further information on how that's looking whether that second filter has been added to their list yet because it's so new or whether we're thinking i mean yeah. we are bubbling away also in the lab with an alternative that we could do but that takes a year to develop so for us to get something out earlier than that might be tricky so i would say for your this following nine months, really like Helio Care, Ultraviolet, La Roche Posay are all really good SPF fifties. Um, ship to Canada. I have a friend there. We don't. We do ship to Canada for Trinity London products, but as I stated earlier, America has the most archaic filters in their um, approved list, and they haven't updated it for twenty years. So ours are just too new to go in. So we will have to. We are looking at what the formulation will be for the US to be able to mm -hmm. um, do that. And it's it's sad because they're just really heavy. Um, Amanda, there is one filter not approved in Australia, so we need to wait, yes, exactly. It's not not approved, it just hasn't got into the system yet. I mean, it's like, whatever, you know what we mean. Um, it's approved uh, for an SPF 30, but yeah. not for a 50, because okay. it's a drug. Yeah, so, so the process of approving for a drug takes longer. Yes. That's all, exactly. literally. Um, and it's a time, I think it's a time frame thing. Uh, what would you recommend for good and lightweight body sunscreen? I think lightweight is a tricky one here. If you want to do a 30 or a 50 as well. So if you want to do a 30, I like the Aven 30 Emulsion mm. Spray. It's nice. Yeah. I do like Kula, which my daughter uses, the 30. But I think a mist, you've got to make sure you've got enough on. But it does help you do the back well, which is an area where you can miss. Yes. And yeah. you can get, you know, that can be where things, nasty things start. Um, La Roche-Posay, the one we've talked about, the um, Astros of whatever, uh, it, yeah. is, is heavy. It takes a long time to rub in. It's very good when you have it on. They have a really good waterproof one, but it takes a long time. So the word lightweight is difficult for body. Mm -hmm. um, but those that would be my recommendations. Heliocare in Europe do a 30 and a 50 in a spray, which I like, actually. It's like the small Heliocare 50, but it's not a foam. It's a spray, and I've used that for my sister's on holiday um, um okay do you recommend using a moisturizer on top of the spf i'd never do a moisturizer on top i'd do it underneath you should yep. spf should always be the last step of your skincare. skincare routine yeah um window cleaner has been treatment by a doc for skin cancer on his nose i gave him the what for about spf good on you liz <laughs> good on you um Trudy, Trini, how do you think you measure up against Nivea Q10 for skin hydration and repair? I mean, a hundred times better. Sorry. I mean, just like, you know, the level of active ingredients. It's a lovely brand. Love Nivea Q10. Very successful sales, but it's a They're mass very product. Very different product, so very I, I wouldn't product. really Yeah, it's literally lots of nice ingredients that feel great on the skin in that. But in terms of active ingredients, I'd say not. We, we would have a lot more. Um, I know we have a lot more. Tracy, congratulations, three years in the making, and we're very proud. I mean, we 
Claire and I feel so excited that it's finally out. Yeah. An eye cream with SPF would complete, complete the routine. Hmm. By the way, just saying in the order of that, not saying whether we are or not at some stage going to ever bring out an eye cream, but you'd always put it on as the first thing. So um, I wouldn't have SPF in an eye cream. I would have an eye cream. And then when I do my SPF, it would go on all over. And this one is kind to the eyes. So you can put it right up. Um, hurrah, vitamin C refill is in stock. I know, thank God. Um, with this help, hormonal pigmentation. Hormonal pigmentation is when you, you know, your hormones fluctuate, you have far more propensity to get it, but things stimulate hormonal pigmentation. Yes. So, um, you know, the light on your skin stimulates it. So if you wear the SPF 50 every day, there is a far less chance that you will get so much hormonal pigmentation and yeah. it will really, really help. So do consider it. Um, freckles, what would you suggest? I bloody love freckles, Elaine. I love freckles. Whenever I see freckles on people, I think how magnificent. So it's a personal relationship you have with your freckles. Um, they will obviously like the sun more. My mum, when she tanned, it would just her skin amalgamated from many freckles to one big freckle. That's how my mother tanned. She had so many freckles, Scottish. So just, you know, if you're using a 50, less freckles will develop yeah, because they my, are sun I find I've got freckles and yeah. my freckles glow in the sun. It looks really they, weird. Like they, they, they actually pulse a little yeah. bit. So they, they, yeah. Okay. Whereas with the SPF 50, they don't. Ah, oh, meaning so they're I overstimulated. Overstimulated. Yeah. They're very... So in the daylight, in daytime, yeah. um, my freckles would be very... So I look like I have a really patchy, dirty face. Yeah. Um, so pale underneath and then really strong freckles. Um, with this, I just have an even tone. So yeah. I love how my skin looks now compared to before. Mm. I used to hate going out in yeah. the sun and having these blotches on my yeah. face that were like much more prominent yeah. than they are naturally. Mm. And then they'd fade when I go mm. out with the light. So yeah, it really is good for freckles. Christine, I have lots of premature deep wrinkles, genetics and Celtic skin. Celtic skin, what to do? Okay, Christine, I don't hold you or anything, but I'm just gonna to say to you, I don't know your skincare routine. I'm gonna presume you've been a minimalist. So if you have, I'm gonna say three things to you that I think are yeah. crucial. I'm going to say having a fantastic vitamin C to even skin tone, yeah. having an amazing exfoliant, because I think you need to just maybe be sloshing off layers of your skin gently to get ingredients to work and having a retinoid. Those are three really, really important things. See the light is your topping on the cake. But when you're talking about these wrinkles, it could be your skin, it could be your skin's thin, uh, um, uh, thin as well. But, but you can actually help. And I have met many women who had skin that you describe and they started on a, they really invested. I'm just telling you, they really invested. They did the whole bloody routine. And you know, they, I, I'm, I meet many women across the world and they go, look at my skin now. And they literally show me pictures because they're so excited. So mm -hmm. it's about what you want to invest in your skin, Christine, how much it bothers you because a full routine at Trinity London will be about 280 pounds, which is a lot of money but you will notice a profound difference. Otherwise, you can knock on my door and I will give you your money back. I know you will notice a huge difference to your skin. Um, Christina, does one use BFF and See the Light? I do, it's a personal choice. Claire, you use See the I Light and, and De-Stress. De yeah, or Rebalance. Yeah, because you don't, for you, you're, you're, you don't, you know, you don't want the glow, no. so much the glow that um, BFF I want a radiant you. finish yeah. um, without the glow. Without the glow. Why not in Oz and New Zealand? Sharon, uh, Sharon, we've mentioned that before earlier in the live. It is about the fact the filters are so new and it takes a while for them to get on the list of the drug list in Australia for SPF 30, they're all approved. For a 50, it then becomes legally a drug in Australia. They're very new filters. Since we you know, have been developing it, one of them's already on the list. So we're deciding, Claire and I, do we wait for the second one to be on the list or do we develop you a formula which tweaks it so we're just and they never tell you the time frame they never Obviously tell you the, the time thing, frame. Yeah. it's very hard to know mm. yeah um there we go so forearms here trudy thank you trini please get on that our forearms are so impacted <laughs> by the sun and us australians affect greatly yeah i totally agree yeah. um we're going to do three more questions um do you have any there yes. nisha that you want to ask how quickly does see the light absorb into the skin and does it leave a white cast okay so here's see the light one Sorry, one. I'm gonna do two pumps because we say four pumps to the whole face and my hand is Smart. only a third of my face. So that's it there. I've done that. And there's a tiny bit left, so I can just do this. That's how quickly it's absorbed. 
we have trust on every skin tone and nobody has a white cast. It does not leave a white cast. No white cast, but what I would always say is, even though it absorbs in yeah. very, very quickly in yeah. your skin, you should also wait 15 minutes, yeah? Yes, I know. So what you have to I, do is, yeah. even when you apply it, it needs to distribute evenly. So all the mm -hmm. filters, what they happen, they can be like a little bit patchy on the face and then it just provides an yeah. even coverage. So give it 15 minutes before you put on the next layer. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Anything yeah, I did say that this morning, and I said, yeah. uh, I then said fifteen minutes. And I thought, well, that's a bit long. Sometimes I'm in a rush. It won't kill you if it's a little bit less time. But I always say, go and go and do your morning constitution and come back. Mm. Somebody said, are you that long on the loo? And I said, yeah. Sometimes I'm just reading, and it's fun. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I think that's it. Um, can we sort of one more? Jane? One more question. Yes. Um, can you recap what your morning routine is, skincare wise? Yes. So my morning routine, and you could do you yep. do yours too, yes. Claire, because my skin is normal. So I do, um, probably in the summer, I do better off with a Foreo, which is our gel cleanser. Then I do Tiptoe in, which is our PHA exfoliant, gently exfoliates and gives a little bit of hydration too. Then I do pump up, or I do a spritz actually, because this is me, of Avian, uh, Aven water, just putting that on. And then I put plump up, which is our peptide and hyaluronic acid serum on. And then I put on our vitamin C boost up, and then I put on See the Light. Sometimes I will put Energize Me underneath, but this morning I did that exact routine without the Energize Me, and then I finished off with BFF, and I put that on top, and then some Just a Touch um, foundation concealer over it. So that skin this morning, that's the routine that I used to get there, and you should have seen me first thing. If you look on my stories, you can just see I look like a pile of shit, and it got to here, and that's just having that layering of a routine. Claire. So my skin's feeling a little bit more sensitive yep. lately, so I've decided to skip out the vitamin C step. Yep. So I always, I love the gel cleanser, mm -hmm. yeah? So I'm using the gel cleanser, then I'm using the Tiptoe In PHA. I use that twice a day, every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love it. Plump up, and then I use Bounce Back, and then I see the light. Fantastic. And then I finish with a bit of de-stress yep. and a bit of uh, Suella for Great. a bit of a glow. Okay, Nisha, what do you do? Um, I cleanse my skin with the Orbest cleanser. Um, I then put on a good plump up. Yeah. Um, then see the light, and then I apply BFF de stress directly. You do as well. And okay. Carry on with my yeah. makeup, no cologne. And Nisha has beautiful skin, and it's I'd say normal to combination or yeah. not normal to combination. Yeah. It's a nice routine that. What do you do, darling? Um, I do balm cleanser. Describe your skin first. Um. Dry, yeah, mostly dry. Yeah, um, it depends a little bit on the season. Mm -hmm. Balm cleanser in the morning is really, really simple. I might do a bit of Energize Me and then literally see the light. Yeah, simple, so yeah. simple. I do most of my nourishing at night serum stuff at yeah. night time. Yeah, so these are girls who are in their 24 30s and therefore their skin is not looking look like, and also they're using a 50 now. Yes, okay, so they're not going to have. The repair that I've needed to do on my skin and, or and you me, need yep, to do yep. on your skin and I think it's incredible that you're getting women in their 20s going 50 for sure Lila is like on the cusp of between a 30 and a 50 to be honest but now she actually does she has to get used to the fact that she doesn't look as tanned as she has before but I introduced her to Dr. Seabag um Take tan drops, which she uses in our I got um, a funny voicemail the other day from my uh, friend's 11-year-old son, and I think kids nowadays are getting all their education on TikTok. Yeah. So he ran me and said, look, Claire, I've got really um, congested skin. He's 11. And he's 11. Yeah. A boy as well. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, I need a proper routine. Can you recommend to me the products to use? You know, he was like, I'm like pale with ginger hair. You know, like he oh was like, God. I need a good SPF. I thought, like, but it's now, it's like, Kids nowadays yeah. are so much more educated. I thought, yeah. thought it was hilarious. Me, it was um, like, yeah. I'm in the sun. Can I peel my whole nose off? That was my <laughs> education. Um, all right, ladies, thank you so much for tuning in. And um, we will be back next week. What are we discussing next week? Do we have a plan for that? Uh, they can pop some suggestions. Why do you pop suggestions of things you would like Claire and I to go through with you? Could be anything, it's not, not always at all on this to do with Trini London. It just happens today. We knew there'd be a ton of questions. So anything you're thinking, how do I do this? And I'm also thinking of getting Shabia back in, in from Victoria Health. I'm away next week, so well, maybe Shabia I'll you're get. Away next week as well. Oh, I'm in New York next week, the week after. Um, but I'm on holiday. You're on holiday the week after that. Oh. I'm not around for three weeks. Okay, fine. Yeah. So she's away. So <laughs> shall I get in Shabir and we can just do what's yeah. our summer supplements? 
and what are we looking at supplements? What are alternatives if we can't do HRT, all that kind of stuff. I know that there are some HRT body um, bioidentical hormones that are out of stock on the NHS and what can you do? So we could look at that with Shabir. I think it'd be great and do that in two weeks time. So until then, Claire, thank you so much. Thanks girls. Thank and we'll catch up again soon. Bye. Bye.